Hi. Hey, Russ here. Hey, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to do a le legacy building uh, video. And what I want to talk about is my dust collection on how I use my dust collection on my machine to control. There is no machine in this shop that puts out more wood chips and more dust than this thing right here, by far. And so dust control on this thing is nice. When you get it from the factory, they have this bag that hangs underneath here and it just, all the stuff is theoretically falls down into that bag. That didn't work real well. And emptying that bag was always a pain in the butt, to be honest about it. So I built these cabinets and they run the full length. I have a flat top all the way down from this end of the legacy to the other end. And that is my inside collection of dust. But before I start going into detail on that, I, I want to talk real quick about our legacy, um, the Google legacy group uh, that's out there. Uh, it's a member, I'm a member of it. It was started many years ago. And uh, there was, uh, I don't know how many members there are all over the world, but these are all people that own the legacy. And we swap ideas and, and pictures and stories and things like that. Most of the guys out there, now in the legacy group um, are either trying to learn something new or they're trying to show you how they took and enhanced their machine so it could do more than what uh, it used to do. They've actually adding capability to it. Now I will tell you that everything I've done to this machine that you'll see when I show you as we go along um, is really based on making the machine work better for the capabilities it has. It can't do anything that it couldn't do before. I can just do it a lot easier than I could when I first bought the machine. It's like building a better jig to do the same thing to do dovetails or whatever you're doing. Different jigs, some work better than others. And I've worked to make this machine better. Just like the Z-axis control that I've already done. I showed you that. Uh, that didn't enhance any of the capability of the z-axis other than it made it easier to control the z-axis and that's really the theory behind what I'm trying to show you about this machine because eventually I'm going to show you once I show you the basics of what makes this machine do what it does then we can start building one of our own that will do the same thing and which is basically an overhead router and you're controlling the x y and z axis just like on a CNC machine now They've been talking in this legacy group about a six uh, legacy 900 that's for sale on there for about 600 bucks. I think it's in Colorado somewhere. It's a good buy. And first off, in my opinion, that didn't look like too bad a deal. And the only difference between the 900 and mine basically is it has bear it has bushings instead of bearings in the headstock, and it doesn't have the two rails here. It only has the four rails, the two top rails for the carriage for the x-axis and the two inside rails which control your table of the height of your workpiece uh, whether it's center to center turning or flat milling this here determines the height and you set the height based on the thickness of the wood that you want to use and on the 600 and 900 machine because it was shorter they didn't need to use these seconds these uh last two rails they only needed this set of rails so that it, it would hold the carriage return for the y-axis and the z-axis and the inner one rails that control the table height these two rails are on here on the 6 1200 and the uh, 1800 simply so that you could take and run the expand of this this is six foot long instead of four the 900 I believe was about four foot long and this one is six so because of that span you have a center post halfway down on these and that's to prevent that top rail from having a sag in it well when you put this thing up on a four point leg system which is what they did they have to give it support both above and below throughout the whole span hence they put this on here sandwich these posts at six points to give you a torsion box type um, sturdiness so that this stays perfectly 90 degrees vertically and stays parallel to each other along the full x-axis that's the reason that they put this fifth and sixth post a rail system on this legacy and on the right legacies that were longer the shorter ones you didn't need that center post so they don't need this legs on that one a lot of times all you had to do is build a cabinet 
and then these poles bolted directly to the top of that cabinet. And I could do that on this if I wanted to do away with these rails and these rails and go and take just this red post and everything above and set it directly onto a cabinet, it would not change the functionality or the capacity of this machine a bit. These rails here are strictly there so that you could have a four post roll around uh, system on it. And that's why there's two more rails on this than there are on the 900 or the 600. I believe that you'll find that's the real reason why they did it that way. Um, don't quote me, I'd have to ask them directly, but it makes a lot of sense to me that's why they did it. So that's, uh, that's why I wanted to talk about that 600 or 900, whatever it is. Uh, how, why it's different and why it only has four rails instead of six. So it doesn't matter. This is only here because of the span. With that all in mind, we go back to uh, the thing about Legacy is it does put out a lot of chips, as I said. And so trying to control those is a real challenge. On the original, you had that bag that hung here, that red bag, and it would just, stuff would fall into it, maybe. But you would still open in between here where the bed goes up and down. So on the sides, you still had chips going everywhere. It was horrible. So what I found is that I put this cabinet system in that gave me a bottom on the inside instead of the bag that was in here. I now have a solid base all the way through. And then what I did on the sides here, I had this, you have your bottom rail here. And what I did was I made, I cut out different panels that I can slip in and out like so and now I made this piece here to set down in this channel here and that is so that I can slide the piece in and out just like a slide by door thing the track is deeper up here than it is in this rail here in this notch so I made this notch here on the bottom that fits into here so that it holds this thing in place and gravity keeps it there and then the top I put a groove here for the bottom of my piece to drop into. So by putting this piece here, if I need access to the inside here to work and set things up and do things, I can take these down anywhere around or all the way around, do everything I want to do, and then when I'm ready to do my work, I can take this and drop it in to this groove, and it's up in that groove, it's notched out on this corner here so that it fits all the way to the edge. Then I put this one in here and push that one all the way to there. Again, it has to be notched. And then I take my third piece and it just goes in between the two. Like so, maybe. And then it drops in to the groove. And now this gives me the bottom I have this thing controlling the chips from coming out and on the sides I have this. I want to put end caps on here, I haven't done it yet, um, so that it controls it on the end. But you still want to have access through the end at times, so I'll probably do something that slides on here. Now this used to have that uh, Acme thread turn knob to raise and lower my bed, but I did something different there, and I'll go over that in, in a later video, probably on the next video about the Legacy, and show you how I did that. That was cumbersome, and I can change the height of this Legacy in just about three minutes, as opposed to, remember how, you know how hard it is to change the height of your table on a Legacy? It's a pain in the butt, but I can do it very easily now, and I'll show you that on the next one. Uh, this one is just about the dust control. So now I have all the dust pretty much staying in the cavity in the area that I would call the strike zone area. So let me pull you in a little closer here. And on the end, I'm gonna have to get a little taller and I'm gonna point down and this, now you're looking down through the top of the unit. This is where my sides are to hold the dust, and all my dust falls into here. When I'm using my carriage return, I throw a shower curtain over this side and over this side, 
And I also use these to help keep the dust down in there. So with the piece across here, and I attach it so that as I move my thing back and forth, the cloth stays here and stays over here and keeps it. So it helps hold the all that chips into this area. Then, when I get done doing my cut, I can just push my thing out of the way. I can take either a brush, a dustpan, or something on that line, and I can push all of my dust into this center hole area. And as I showed you a minute ago, there's a, a box right here, an opening, and I have a little tub that, as you can see, that's inside this area here so that all of these chips, I can instantly get 90% of it all cleaned up. So that I can maintain and be able to use this. Then I can pull this out, take it over, and empty it in the in my trash. And all those chips are gone easily. Then I go through here with a vacuum cleaner and a toothbrush. And I clean up all my rails with a shop vac to clean it up for the next time I want to do a cut. Uh, you always have to clean these rails every time. It's not a big deal if you do it every time, especially down in here. That's why I use a little toothbrush to help break that loose as I'm using the shop vac to get it all cleaned out of the rails. I don't get it perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. This takes care of 99% of all my sawdust and chips that just build up huge. And it all goes in here so I can then get rid of it easy. When I built this cabinet system, it's actually a cabinet here. And the cabinet here, this piece just slides in and out. And I had this center square opening cut out so that everything can be pushed into this tub and I can empty that to get rid of the, all these chips easily. Uh, the other thing that I do on this is that sometimes I want to take and cut a piece vertically in here, like put finger joints on the end of a board. So I have my uh, bed, which is, this isn't it, but it has a vertical table on it so I can plant my workpiece in here vertically instead of horizontally. So I can take my piece and put it this way, and then I can do finger joints or something on the end of it, a mortise and tannin. I can make those kind of joints with my legacy by mounting my piece here. And if it's very long, I can actually take the tub out completely, take this shelf out completely, and there's a square opening in the bottom shelf here so that it goes all the way to the floor of my shop. And that gives me about 40 inches of length for me to hold a board here and do some kind of joinery on it, on the end of it. So this works real well, even for boards uh, like table legs and things like that, and you want to work on the end of it. As long as it's less than like 44 inches, I can still use it. Mount it in my legacy. And be able to do the work on it. So I thought it was important to have this access opening. And by having it as dust collection most of the time. And also I can use a longer piece in here. By staying over this area. To do that kind of work too. So that's how I collect the dust on this unit. It's not rocket science. I keep it covered with plastic pieces and I attach them to the carriage so that they slide along here with that and that helps hold 99% of my chips and mess in here. I use a shop vac on the connection there to help keep some of the fine dust down in here and rather than getting out in the air. Now I can tell you right now you still get a certain amount of fine dust out in the air. So you need some kind of breath filter uh, when you're doing this. But I'm also working on the idea that right overhead, what I want to do is take two window fans, like the one I built for air filtration uh, in my shop, and you, I showed them to you. Uh, I want to take some kind of filter and put a couple of them up here so that it sucks all the air straight up through and into the filters at each end from each end right over the top of this machine so that 
I actually will be able to take a lot of the fine dust, like an oven uh, blower over an oven range, and be able to suck all that contamination up through there instead of breathing it. And I think that'll work. Now that I found this as a permanent home right here, this I think is where it's going to be. I now can attach this blower system up here and maybe even put it on a slide rail so I can adjust where those two fans might be to get the best use out of them. Um, make some kind of overhead rail system above this. So that's the idea. So anyway, that's where my dust collection is. It's not the best in the world, but it's definitely a lot better than uh, where it was when it came when I bought this from the factory. And that's how I control it. If you have any questions about this, give me a call. Uh, <laughs> give me a, a make a comment down below. I do appreciate you stopping by. Don't forget to like this video. If you have questions, please just leave them down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Um, but that's basically how this works. Knowing how all this works, eventually when we make our own, because I do want to make another one smaller, and when I do, uh, you still need to kind of understand if you want to make your own, you kind of have to understand the ins and outs of this machine and why it's the way it is. And so that's why I wanted to explain the dust collection, not only for the people that now own one, but also for those that when we get ready to build it, we'll be able to apply some of these same ideas to one that's going to be shop built instead. Thanks for stopping by. And hey, I hope you come back again soon. See ya.